What's up guys? I am in Studio City right now filming at our friend's house because we are redoing some studio stuff right now. And so the people who produce our content, Steve and Jenny Maddox, they were in their house. This is a beautiful house. I'm so glad we're here. And I have something to talk to you about that's very serious, but I want to keep it lighthearted in the context of these videos. But I want to talk about what to do with a prophecy that's been disappointing because it wasn't fulfilled or it didn't happen. Something you were believing for, whether God showed you, God showed someone else, and you believed it, you put your faith in it, and it didn't happen. And I want to just say that this has happened to most people who go after prophecy about something at some point, we miss it. Whether it's something we've been prophesied over for ourselves, or someone else gives us a word. And some of this is because we desire a lot of things in life. We're going for, you know, to try and believe God for the best out of life. And in that, we start to set expectations for certain things. Maybe it's resources, jobs, purpose, identity, relationships, finances. I mean, if you're in the prophetic camps and streams long enough, where people prophesy and practice prophecy a lot, you'll probably get some words about wealth, you'll get some words about owning properties, you'll get some words about, you know, more children or babies, or maybe it's about your mate. I was single until I was 37. And I remember at one point, even in that, I asked people to stop giving me words about marriage because so many people would give me words about marriage. And it was every kind of word you could think of. Some of you have heard me talk about this before. But it was so discouraging when at one point when I was moving out to California, I was really believing God when I when I was moving from you know Kansas City then Alabama to, to California that I was going to have the person who would do life with me in California. And I was believing that it would happen relatively quickly. I'd given God my 20s as a fast from dating, so I didn't date at all in my 20s. And I get into my 30s and I'm thinking, okay, now it's going to happen. He's going to instantly bring someone to me. And those are the kinds of words I got. It's God's going to instantly bring you a mate. You're going to get married at 31. You know, these kinds of words from major, major prophetic leaders and leaders in the body of Christ. They would, almost every leader would see me at around 30 years old and say, you're going to be married within 12 months. And that year I met some amazing women, but they were not my Cherie, who I'm married to now. Who I'm so glad I waited for. I'm so glad there was a process before. But it was very hard, like, because I had my expectations. I was believing that that's going to happen. This is what God's doing. And when it didn't happen, and even when I tried to make some things fit to make it happen, and those even became very disappointing, kind of like Ishmael. I tried to make, you know, try to make it happen, and it didn't happen. It was, it was very, like, traumatizing to my heart. And I had to go to God and say, okay, God, I know that you can be trusted. I don't know if I trust my ability to hear from you or other people's ability to hear from you right now especially on this issue, but I know you're, you never change and you're good. And that's where we have to come to is, God, you never change. Your desire for me is good and you have good for me, even though it didn't play out the way I thought it was going to. Or I don't trust my ability to believe in the things that you're telling me right now, but I believe in the Bible. I believe in, you know, the basics of our faith. And so sometimes it's hard when you come to that place of a crisis of spiritual faith based on hearing God or not hearing God. So I'm going to encourage you guys, when you're in that place, be honest. Don't pretend or pretend you have faith when you don't. Don't put a positive spin on everything, but be really honest and say, you know, to you yourself and to maybe one or two close people to you and say, I'm super disappointed. I tried to believe in something. I don't know why it didn't happen. Other times I believed this way with God, it did happen. Or maybe this is your first time. I'm trying to believe in my first time, I fell flat on my face. Now here's the good news. When you walk with God and you believe he's gonna to speak to you and lead you in life, there's a lot of other opportunities where he will come through and you will understand it. But there are those moments when we think we've heard something and there's a big question mark because it didn't come through. And part of maturity is living with the fact that you're not going to always understand everything. And that's one of the hardest things for humans, especially Western minded, like Americans, Canadians, people from the UK, Australia. We have a hard time not understanding everything. So we want to quantify everything. So the moment we hit something in our faith that we can't understand, a lot of times we'll discount that gift. We'll throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, this is prophecy, or this is the charismatic movement, or this is prophets, or this is whatever. We get so disappointed that we villainize everybody and everything that's connected to it and say, I'm not going to believe this way anymore. When That's really not what we need to do. We have to be honest with ourselves that we're maturing in our faith, especially in different issues that are newer to us, or maybe it's something that you know isn't newer to us, but the subject matter we're believing for is newer to us. Now realize, with marriage, for me, I knew that God sounds you know, so much like my, or my hormones sound so much like God. At times, I remember at one point, I was like, I think this girl, the first couple of dates we went on, and when I was around 30, 31, I think this is the girl I'm gonna marry, because it felt like that. It felt like love and whimsical and exciting, 
And then the further we got in, the more I realized this is not someone I want to be with for the rest of my life. But it was hard because I was trying to convince myself to fit her in the context of what I was believing for because hormones and desire sound like the Holy Spirit, especially because the majority of the way we hear from God is an internal process because the God of all the universe comes and lives inside of me and is one with me. I mean, how beautiful is that, that God is inside of me? That means I have to learn how to discern when it's God's voice. I have to learn how to discern when it's my desire. Even sometimes you can have the real prophetic word, but your expectations come around and you start living more for the prophetic word than you do for everything else in life. I've seen people who do that so many times where they have one prophetic promise about moving or about an industry they're supposed to be involved with. We see this a lot in the entertainment industry. I'm an actor. They put everything else on hold, all of their relationships, all of their friends for the sake of that career or that goal. And then they sacrifice really good things because they can't be present in today because they're looking so forward to what's going to happen when they achieve that goal. And then you know what happens? Even if they achieve that goal, they're usually very lonely because they went about it the wrong way. This happens all the time with the prophetic is that we start to pursue the prophetic as the goal versus Jesus himself and the relationships he's given us. So a lot of times when you're disappointed in the prophetic, you can kind of go backwards to where you lost your hope and find where you left it, as Bill Johnson would say, Pastor Bill from Redding, California. Go back to where you lost your, your hope and where you became disappointed and say, what was I hoping in? Was I hoping in Jesus and the relationships I have and for this, or was I hoping so much in having that epic property or having that money come through or having that relationship or that career or that favor? And so I got disappointed when it didn't come and now I'm not living anymore. I'm not existing in my faith in a, in a healthy way anymore. I'm telling you, it's one of the, the problems of life is that we're gonna face disappointments and troubles. And one of the disappointments you'll face when you pursue a relationship with the Holy Spirit is misunderstanding at times what he's trying to say or interpreting it wrong or not even hearing it all, hearing your own desires. And don't let the weight of the fact that you might miss it ruin your whole relationship and opportunity to have an incredible, thriving, Holy Spirit time with God because, I mean, the, 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 the benefits of prophecy so outweigh these momentary disappointments. Now I'll say this, for some of you who've experienced maybe disappointment because of past prophetic words that a lot of leaders in the body of Christ said, maybe it's about elections, maybe it's about you know the coronavirus sickness, maybe it's about something else in your nation and all these prophets were wrong and it disappointed you and now you don't wanna believe, you're tempted not to believe in the prophetic. It's not worth giving up on prophecy which came from God because of representation of it was false in that moment. So don't give up on the gifts of God or who God is in his nature where he's giving you these tools because you were disappointed in someone else's gift or you're disappointed in someone else's ministry, but stay uh, not disappointed, but appointed in your faith over these issues and let God speak to you. Let God build his testimony in you. Let God build credibility with you. And as these ministers and even myself are rebuilding credibility to say things maybe in politics or over sickness or over an industry or whatever, as people are rebuilding credibility, allow your own heart to still have credibility with the gifts because no one should be able to diminish the goodness of God by their witness to you who have God, who have maturity in God, who love God. No one else should be able to diminish that testimony just by their maybe either bad witness or immaturity or fractured perspective or whatever else it is. So I'm gonna encourage you to stay connected to God, stay connected to the word, stay connected to the gifts he's given us, whether someone else was a bad representation or an immature representation, stay connected. So I hope this helped you today. We have a lot of resources that will mentor you online on our mentoring platform. You may not have heard of this before, but we have five videos a week with a live mentoring time on Tuesdays where you can come and ask me your questions. It's awesome. We also have a monthly event. Uh, we have so many back catalogs of events too that you can go through and learn like how did Jesus handle stress or modern prophets? What does it look like to be a modern prophet or even how to influence influencers? These are the kinds of events we're doing on the platform and you get them free as part of your monthly subscription as well as our live mentoring times. I hope you'll join us there so that you can really build your faith around the authentic love-based prophetic anointing.